What's up YouTube, this is LDS Reliance. Today I wanna to give you a quick little video to show you a install that I did on a solar panel system for an RV last winter. This was one of the first customers that I did an install for for my new company, JRL Solar, where I install off-grid solar panel systems for private individuals and businesses. The customer gave me permission to use pictures and video that I took of this install, but it's not going to be a step-by-step -step or a exhaustive video of everything that we did. The customer had just purchased this used RV and wanted to tour the country and live an off-grid lifestyle as he worked as a freelance writer. The RV had an Onan generator, but he, it was very loud and he didn't want to have to use it all the time. He wanted to be able to run lights and basic things with just a solar panel system. Now, as far as components for this build, the customer had already bought 300 watts worth of Renogy solar panels that came with mounting brackets and the various hardware. Uh, came with MC4 connectors on them. He, it also came with a MPPT charge controller and he had already purchased a Xantrex 2000 watt pro watt pure sine wave inverter. I then sold him a MillerTech 65 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery and the necessary hardware to complete the installation. We started out by thoroughly cleaning the surface of the roof where we were going to be doing the drilling and scoping out the flattest surface of the roof to install the panels. Instead of spending over $100 on curved feet for the sloped roof, we went ahead and used the Renogy brackets. We just had to get some washers and some spacers to make sure that it was as flat as possible. We then used rubber gaskets and self-tapping metal screws to attach them to the roof. There was really nowhere to hide the wires, but we did securely fasten them to the roof so that they couldn't go anywhere. Inside, we found a cabinet that was just barely big enough to fit the components. It was right next to the fuse boxes so that we could wire into the RV's electrical system very easily. We chose to put the battery inside so that we wouldn't have to hack up and permanently modify the RV's internal wiring and disable the lead acid battery bank that was in a cabinet outside the RV. This was my very first RV install, so there were a few things that I learned that I hadn't encountered in any other solar panel installation before. The first thing that I learned was it's a bigger challenge than I thought to get solar to play nicely with the internal wiring that already exists in an RV that's typically powered by a generator. The reason for that is solar generates DC power, which would feed the DC circuit and then would convert to AC with an inverter. But it works the opposite way with a generator where you're producing 120 volt AC power, which feeds the AC circuit and then converts to 12 volt DC to power the 12 volt circuit. There are a few ways to get this to work, but none of them are very cheap, and this customer decided that he didn't want to do that at this time, so what we did was we left the wiring disabled for the generator, and the customer is only using solar at this time. The next thing that I learned is that switching an RV to lithium batteries instead of lead acid batteries is kind of problematic, and we made this decision about halfway through the install, which made it even more complicated. I won't go too in depth into this, but basically the device in the RV that converts the AC power from the generator and uses it to charge the lead acid battery is only compatible with a lead acid battery. It is not programmable and cannot be used to charge a lithium battery, at least not with its ideal settings that will promote the long life of a lithium battery. To fix this, you have to replace the converter charger unit with one that's compatible with lithium and there aren't very many on the market to choose from at this time. And last but not least, a solar panel installation is a lot more difficult in tight quarters. Everything takes just a little bit longer and requires a little bit better planning than it would if you had plenty of space. All in all, it's a good system, it performs well, it looks good, and the customer learned a lot and I learned a lot in the process. Thanks for watching. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, be sure to hit the notification icon.